Previously on Power Point OS Tutorials, we did this. We created a catalog of UI elements and we created a boot screen. Now today we're going to be working on the login system and the setup. So without further ado, let's get started. In order for the user to be able to have a personalised copy of the operating system, they would need to be able to define their own username and password for the login system. So in order to facilitate that, you need to first enable them to actually define their own usernames and passwords, and that's where the job of this setup comes in. So to activate a setup, what we need to do is create a new slide, and we're going to drag that to the end. So this will be um, our first setup slide. Then we're going to grab everything we need from our resources section. So we'll need an app strip for the mode, which will be set up. We'll need a background for, well, the background really. You need the titles, subtitle text, and heading for the descriptions of what to do. And we'll need a group, and we'll also need a button. So these are all the different things we'll need. And we literally just paste them now. So once we've pasted them down, we can actually arrange them in a suitable format. And I'll be back when I have done that. I have now created the setup UI and well I have the title here that tells you what the whole thing's about, account setup. Then then it gives you an instruction, please enter a username and the password, and then it captions the different text boxes for what you need to add in. And I've just decided to group them under security info. It gives a little bit of depth if you have more um, user elements in the background. And then you have exit and create an account. So exit will just take you out of the presentation and create an account will take you to the next step or take you to the login in this case. Now you may have noticed that I, oh, I forgot <laughs> to rename that. Now you may have noticed I have left something out and that is the text boxes. So you need to go to developer and draw a text box. Now if you don't have the developer tab, it's pretty easy to get it. What you need to do is right click on the ribbon customize the ribbon and tick the developer box there. So once you have that you now have the developer tab and you can access these controls here. So um, the text box is the second one from the left at the top and under the control section and it's basically text in the box is how I remember it. So to draw it you just need to draw it like an auto shape just like that. Um, a desired width and height that you want and we'll keep this as a template for password just in case we need to make any changes. Now coincidentally uh, this doesn't quite fit into our theme of the operating system so I reckon a little bit of a raised effect on this would be better. So under special effect we can change the effect of the text box from flat to be just like a normal text box in Windows to be raised, sunken, etched and bump etc. I'm going to have it raised slightly so it has a slight um, slight gradient at the bottom. Now the other problem with it is the font of the text. If we type in some text, it's a little too big and it's in the wrong font. So to, so to fix that you need to go under properties to font and uh, turn the font size down and find a, a font that suits the um, theme of the operating system which is century gothic in my case. But it could be anything. So as long as your the font is installed on your computer and it's not one of the office fonts that's only unique to office then you can use it. Now I'm going to go for Century Gothic at 11 and that gives me a nice little um, bit of text. Now when we type something in here in the username it's all fine but we don't want somebody seeing our passwords so in order to censor it we need to find the property password char or password character um, and basically what that does is anything you type into it will be replaced by that character so if I had a, um, a hash in there then everything I type will turn into hashes but it will still retain its initial value so as you can see the value there is DFS, DFSF but um, even though it's replaced by hashes we, it still preserves the um, value um, you can also have asterisks there, or you could have, uh, what else, you can have zeros. Some people like having or O's, things like that. 
but for, for this time I'm going to go for um, a hash. So once that's done we have now created our text boxes. Now before we start our next uh, UI we're going to add just a little bit of a nice background to it, I suppose base. Hmm. Now the, the process of choosing a good desktop wallpaper can be very tedious. So I'm going to right click on the background, oh hang on, let me just actually demonstrate that. So I right click, press format background and insert online pictures. Now these are all under Creative Commons I believe so you shouldn't uh, run into any problems. Um, hmm. There's not many connotations to base that could be translated into a visual medium but uh, maybe in a way so I think I'll go for this one. So now to apply that to all the slides we just press apply to all and we, of course we can change this if we want to have a custom wallpaper later on which I'll show you how to do. Now onto the exciting bits. So I have designed the user interface, we have locked there, we have the background and then we have the button. I have a t I've had to size down the title otherwise if we have it to original size it looks ridiculous. Um, so. I've also had this as a username and this is a password um, instruction. Now again I've missed out the text box but we'll uh, deal with that later. The first thing to do is to rename this shape which is um, the username. So to make sure it conforms to the username we've actually entered in here we need to give it a special name. Now to do that, I've already opened it there, but you go to home, select, selection pane and toggle that and it will give you the selection pane. Now the good thing you could do is you can reorder shapes, so bring them to forward and to back, but you can also rename them. So I'm going to rename this to something more memorable instead of rectangle 20, I'm going to call this username. And we know it's on slide 6 just in case because we'll need that later. Um, so now that we've got that we'll do the other thing which is adding in the password. So the password text box to enter in your password, you just need to copy and paste across and just align it to how you wish so I might have it um, next to the text box. I'm not actually sure where I'll have it, I'll probably have it mm, these are the design choices you have to make I know this looks ridiculous but it doesn't look that ridiculous, I'm gonna have it here so there is our password dialog um, set up now the next thing we're going to do is actually wire this all together so I'll be back for that now the first thing we need to wire up is the username. So whenever we want to type something into the username, we want this to update according to what it is. Now we've already named this username, so that's step one done. Uh, the next step is to double click on this. Now this will open up the code for that particular text box. Uh, this code will run when you type something into it. Uh, that's why the event here is textbox1 underscore change. So after that, all we need to do is update the contents of it. So we go slide 6, because our um, username is on slide 6. And we'll go back to this, dot shapes. So this will open up all the shapes. And within the brackets and the quotes, we need to give the name of the shape. Now this shape is called username, as we have just given it the name. So username, and then dot text frame so this will access what's in the text of the shape dot text range which is what's in the actual um, that's the whole text in itself dot text which is specifically the text I know that's very lengthy but that's just how it works equals and then what we need to do is find is set the text um, to what's in the text of this text box which is text box one dot text so text box one dot text. So now that that is set, um, every time we update uh, this, it will also update this. So let's say I decided to set the username to Bob. Then if I go back to this, Bob is now our username. So that's all done. And the next thing to do is to wire up the password. Now this is where it gets interesting. Now to run the codes to do this, we're going to be checking if the t the value of this text box is the same as the value of this text box because this is the original password and if the password you've entered matches the original password then it should take you to the next slide. Now first of all we need to actually create a next slide so we're just going to duplicate for now and just delete everything so we know it works. 
And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to double click on here. Now this will open up the VB editor, but we're going to, underneath these subroutines, create a new subroutine. Now we're going to call this login. So sub login. And then we add the little brackets at the end, hit enter, and it automatically adds n sub after that. So under this, we're going to um, test if this is equal to that. And first of all, we need to note down the names of their shapes. So on slide six, our current text box is called text box two. And on the original text box is on slide five, but it's also called text box two. So that's pretty convenient. So we need to go back to our Visual Basic editor and we go if slide six dot text box two dot text equals slide five dot text box two dot text then so and then end it off with end if so anything between the if and the end if will be run if this condition here turns out to be true now we're going to our consequence of the user getting it right will send them to slide seven now i might add in some extra slides in between so i'm not sure which order these will be in because these might actually not end up being slide five six or seven you might accidentally move them around so I'm going to use because it's right next to it I'm going to use the next feature so as you can see if you enter in a hyperlink um, hyperlink to next slide is already there so we're going to use that functionality just programmatically so we're going to go active presentation dot slideshow window which is there you can press the down key and press the dots to adopt it dot view which will reference the slideshow view dot next and what that will do it will just advance the slide of course you can also set it to a specific slide so you go to view dot go to slide and then specify the slide like five go to slide seven if we want but I'm going to use next now if they get it wrong um, then we're going to use the else clause so we just type else and then this in this little code between else and end if that will run if this isn't true so if it is true it will run this if it isn't it will run that now we we want to notify the user that they've entered in the wrong password so we're going to type message box which is msg box and then our prompt which will be in quotes so whatever is within the quotes will be displayed as a prompt now we could say incorrect password and then but so that's the first argument which means the first um, thing that is passed on to the function the next thing is button so we can say it's is it a critical error message I think it's a VB exclamation so if you type VB exclamation and then type the next comma and then we have the title which we will call um, to say login so that will be displayed at the top of the message and then the other things are we don't really need them now also we need to do the user a favor and actually clear the text box um, so we go s slide six dot text box two dot text equals within the quotes there's nothing so that will set it to nothing we could also um, add that to the the if clause so if you do get the password right if someone else comes along afterwards and the password's already in there for them then they know it's worked then they can get in so in order to prevent that you set it to nothing if they get it right or they got it wrong so now that we've got a little piece of code all we need to do that is assign it to this little button here to do that we need to go to insert action and then run macro slide six dot login so let's test our code let's get it deliberately wrong if I actually know, need to know what I type for the password because I can't remember that DFSFD thing so I'm gonna say Hello is our password with a capital. Very weak, and I wouldn't actually do that in real life. And over here, uh, under the locked screen, we're going to type hello with another O in. So when we type sign in, incorrect password. And it clears it for us. But if we get it right, 
then it will send us to the next slide. Now, this is all fine and dandy except for one aspect. As soon as you restart the operating system, it goes straight back to setup, which is a bit of a pain. However, the way to combat that is simply to assign a macro to create a count that hides this slide and advances you to this slide. So that's two very simple commands we can do very quickly. So go back to Visual Basic Applications and create a new sub called, um, I, I suppose, setup finish. And then, in that you go active presentation dot slideshow window dot view dot go to slides and we're going to go to slide six because that's where the login system is and then we're going to on the next slide active presentation dots dot slides five dot dot um, slideshow transition dot hidden equals MSO true. So that will hide that slide. Hides slide five. Almost rhymes. Um, and all we need to do to assign it to that button is to go insert action run macro setup finish. So let's test it out. If we've created our uh, new identity we're going to call ourselves Hmm, what should we call ourselves? Jeff. And his password is 1234. And create account. Welcome back, Jeff. Your password is 123. Or is it? No, it isn't. 1234. Gets you signed in. And it's hidden slide 5 for us. So if we restart. Um, this is going to take a while, but if we restart on the slide here, it will, it will literally just skip to um, the login slide. Back to Jeff. And then finally, the last thing to do is to go here to exit, and that should exit the presentation by going to action, hyperlink to end show. So after that, we save our presentation, and it's all done. If you enjoyed this video you can kindly like, comment or subscribe and on the screen is the other content that there is on this channel as well as a discord server link which you can join um, that's usually in the description so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.